We're still on angles of elevation and depression. This is the last video clip on solving right angle triangle. We're using trigonometrical ratios. On the screen we have a question. From a position A, 20 meters away from the foot of a cliff, the angle of elevation of the top of the cliff is 60 degrees. On the opposite side of the cliff, the angle of elevation from another point, B, is 45 degrees. We are asked to calculate the distance between these two points, A and B. Let's have a rough sketch. We have a cliff. It should just be a straight line. I use a straight line to represent that. And let's say this is our ground, horizontal ground. We are told that from a point on one end, Let's say from this point, okay, from the point on this ground, A, from the point A, let me put my A here, which is 20 meters away from the foot of the cliff, that is from there to this point, it's 20 meters. Now the angle of elevation of the top from, please take note of the word, from, from the position A, Right? We are going to take our angle of elevation there. So if I'm going to cite that top of the tower from A, we need to elevate our eyes through the angle 60 degrees. That's what the question is saying. That the angle of elevation from A is 20, sorry, is 60 degrees. And that on the opposite side of the cliff, on this other side, a point B taking our bearing from B, from this side, take note there, from another point B. So, angle of elevation this time is measured from here to size the top of the cliff. So, we take this down. And we are told that in order to also elevate our eyes from B to see the top of the cliff, that the angle will be 45 degrees. Let's look at something neat. Here we are. Okay, here we have our A on the right-hand side, our B on the left-hand side. But it's still the same thing. This is my A. Angle of elevation from A is 60 degrees, which is 20 meters from the foot of the cliff. Our cliff there is in blue. And then from the opposite side, the angle of elevation is what? 45 degrees from B. We are asked to calculate the distance AB. Of course, for us to get the distance AB, you will agree sorry, let's get back. You will agree that for us to get the distance AB, we will need to find the distance between B and N, and distance between A and N. The distance between A and N has already been given to us as 20 meters. How do we now get the distance BN? I'll turn my focus to triangle QNB. If you look at triangle QNB, none of the sides, this side is not given, this side is not given, this side is not given. We only know that this angle is 45 degrees. That's a serious problem. How then do I know the length BN? I look at the other triangle. I am given the side AN an angle 60. I said, oh, from these two, I can find the length of QN. And if I get the length of QN, I can now use it in triangle QNB to find the length of BN. So, okay. So, first, I turn my focus toward triangle QNA. And looking at that triangle, there's an angle given to us that's 60 degrees. The side QN is facing that side, that angle. So, I call it the opposite side. Of course, this is 90 degrees, since we expect our cliff or the cliff to be standing upright. So this should be 90 degrees. Therefore, this is the hypotenuse, and then this will be the adjacent. Of course, you agree in this case that we are looking for the opposite, and we have the adjacent. So we're going to apply tan. So we'll say, okay, tan of 60 is equal to what? The opposite, which is our QN divided by the adjacent, which is our AN. 
of course our a n has been given to us as 20 so this is q n divided by what 20 tan 60 is simply root 3 you cross multiply here you will agree that q n the length of q n is 20 root 3 now we are happy we know the length q n so we can now consider triangle q b n so that we can find the length b n of course once we have obtained b n we can then calculate our a b please take note this is a mistake we are looking for a b a b is equal to a n plus b n not a n a b plus a n plus a n so this should be equal to this should be equal to please so our objective now is to find b n let's write this in the NITSA form so here we are the side that we are looking for a n should be equal to we are looking for a b should be equal to a n plus b n a n is already known as 20 our problem is to find b n from what we've just done we have obtained q n considering triangle q n a we have obtained q n as 20 root 3 so next we are looking at triangle q b n if i look at triangle q b n my objective is to find the length what the length b n how do i find that length i look at that triangle i say well now i know q n q n is what is 20 root 3 okay and i have this angle as 45 okay so which means i know the opposite side and then i'm looking for the adjacent side because this is a right angle of course we know this is going to be our hypotenuse since it's facing the right angle so okay let's adjust there from that triangle the tan of 45 the tan of 45 why am i using tan because i'm considering just opposite and adjacent is what the opposite which is qn all divided by the adjacent which is bn and of course we know qn is what qn has been given to us as 20 root 3 tan of 45 is 1. Even my grandmother can still remember that. And then this is bn. We cross multiply here. This is like 1 over 1. 1 times bn will give me bn. And then of course 1 times 20 root 3 will give me 20 root 3. So bn is 20 root 3. Therefore to obtain our ab we are going to add up bn to an which is just 20. Let's put this out neatly. There we are. You can see our BN is 20 root 3. Our AB is therefore BN plus AN. Sorry, this is a mistake again. The mistake, this should be 20. What we're supposed to do BN plus AN. Please kindly correct this on your side. The answer should be 20 root 3 plus 20. This part should be taken off. The answer is 20 root 3 plus 20. So that's it for that question. The next question we have here says, from a position P on a level ground, the, level, the angle of elevation of the top of a tower is 30 degrees. From a position P on level ground, the angle of elevation of the top of a tower is 30 degrees. From another point, P, 7 meters closer to the tower. That is closer when compared to P. The angle of elevation is 60 degrees. What is the height of the tower? Let's look at the diagram to this. First statement says from a position P, as you can see on the screen there. From the position P, there. The angle of elevation is 30 degrees. That's talking about the top of the tower. Then if we move 7 meters closer, that is PQ is 7 meters, and take that angle of elevation again, this time around it is 60 degrees. And the question is demanding that we should find the height of the tower from just these two statements. Now problems like this, if you can observe clearly, we have two right angle triangles here. All we have to do is to bring out the two right angle triangles. I can see triangle P, P, C, B as a right angle triangle. 
So I can draw that out. So okay, PCB there, there, and then you bring this down. That's your P C B. This will be the height of the triangle. Our uh, P B will be seven plus X, where X is the distance between Q and B. And then we are told this is what? 30 degrees. We can solve, we can create an equation from this. But after that, we also look at the other triangle, QCB. We have a smaller triangle there. There. Again, the same height as CB. But this is X. And this is given to us as 30. Now, once you can bring out these two right angle triangles, we have solved our problem. We'll develop an equation from the first triangle, develop another equation from the second triangle, and solve simultaneously. So let's see how that is done. From the first triangle, from triangle PCB, let me see which one will be my opposite. PCB, I have this angle as 30, therefore H is going to be my opposite. And then, of course, PB will be my adjacent. So we have here that tan 30 is opposite, which is CB, all over PB, which is the, sorry, opposite of our adjacent. The opposite is CB, which is the height, which you don't know, divided by 7 plus X. And tan 30 is 1 over 3. Of course, I can change this and write as what? That CB, which is the height, H, is equal to what? 7 plus X divided by root of 3. That's what we have obtained from the first right angle triangle, that is triangle PCB. We then look at the triangle QCB and obtain another equation, again in terms of H. We do that again here in triangle QCB, which is my opposite and which is my adjacent. By now we should all be experts in this. H is facing our angle 60, therefore that's my opposite. And then this QB is going to be the adjacent, which is just x. So say tan 60 will be what? Tan 60 in this case, take notes, triangle QCB, is what? Opposite, sweep, which is length CB, which you can call H. You can also write this as your H, divided by x. And that gives you H over x, where tan 60 is root 3. I'm playing that out. Remember my CB is what? H equals to x root 3. So from the first equation, we have that H is what? 7 plus X divided by 3. And we have, here we have that what? H is equal to X plus root 3. Remember my H is representing the length of CB. Of course, I can now equate these two equations. If H is this, and H is also that, it simply means that 7 plus X divided by root 3 from the first equation will be the same thing as what? x times root 3. And that solves our problem. From here we can solve for x. Once we obtain x, our h can easily come out, which is the height of the triangle. Let's progress. So that's it there. 7 plus x equal to what? Equal to x plus 3. Yeah. The two CBs, which is our h. This is equal to 7 plus x over root 3. And the second triangle, we have that CB is equal to X plus X times root 3. So we equate the two of them. Cross multiply root 3 times root 3 will give us 3. So we have 3X. And this is 7 plus X. Solving here, we have X equals to 2 point, sorry, 3.5. Now we know 3.5 as our X. The CB, which is the height from this relationship here, is what? X times root 3. Our x is 3.5. Multiply that by root 3, which is 1.732. And we have that our height is 6.062. That's it for angles of elevation and depression. We have finally come to the end of solving right angle triangle. I'm very sure we've all really enjoyed this. Remember, we have two major tools in solving right angle triangle. The Pythagoras theorem and using the trigonometrical ratio talking about a so for sine ka for cosine and toa for tangent why don't you try your hand on this little problem
It's been wonderful having you around, solving right angle triangles. Next, I will advise you move on to see how to solve general triangles by looking at trigonometric car ratios of general angles and then move on straight to sine rule, cosine rule, and then bearings. That way you would have been able to round up all your techniques, hone your skills in solving triangles generally. Thank you very much. It's been in a King video tutorials.